is that the whole point of the doomsday machine is lost. If you keep it a secret, why didn't you tell the world, eh? United Universities of Europe, is it science fiction? Is one university for the whole of Europe or even for the whole world, is it a realistic utopia? Or is it the other way around? Is the world become um, a university, an undivisible knowledge system? And something that Borges would describe, something that we haven't just noticed yet? Let's look into science fiction literature to find out what is the relation between society and universities? What is the impact of research on society? Pedro Marquez has just published a paper about just that, and we're going to talk to him. The idea actually came from my co-author, Joaquin Azagro. Well, if you look at the literature now, there's the academic literature, yeah, the papers, the books on university, third mission, university interaction with society. Almost all of it looks at it from a positive perspective. Right? But there actually used to be some more critical literature in the past, but it's kind of disappeared. And he said, well, let's try and find a way to, to see how society looks at this thing. Then our uh, methodology in selecting the books was all the books that have been awarded the three major science fiction uh, uh, awards, plus Dune, which is a foundational uh, book in uh, modern uh, science fiction. And so, because, the, of course, the, these awards have been given through time, there was also a chronological aspect of it. So, as, as this public perception changed over time. So there were these two questions. So is it negative or positive? And has it changed over the last few decades? You have done this research on science fiction literature um, together with Laura Gonzalez Salmeron and uh, Joaquin Asagra Caro. You're all from Valencia. Um, please tell me, what was the most striking discovery you made? There is, the, the, let's say, the, the normal narrative element of the disinterested researcher versus the you know money seeking or profit seeking or power seeking researcher what we noticed though is that as time went by this tension disappeared in the in the in the in the, in the books and so you see almost like a i don't know a seamless sort of like a a, a non problematic interaction between science or universities and government and business and we, our, our main conclusion was, well, either people, let's say, culture, society, accepted uh, that indeed this interaction is positive, or the other way around is nobody expects the scientists anymore to be the disinterested public servant, and everyone just assumes that science is in it for money and power. So we operate in a context where, okay, the universities want to do good things, but the pressure from the funding agencies, from the governments, is to get resources, get research money, publish. And this takes a lot of time if you want to do it well. And this takes time away from doing other things, engagement, you know, uh, working with social partners, uh, trying to do things that don't necessarily have an academic output, but actually give something to society. So I think there's always this tension. You are not cured yet, boy. But sirs, missus, I see that it's wrong. It's wrong because it's like against society. Pedro, your university, the UPV, is part of a university alliance called Enhance. The interesting thing is that their self-perception is very positive. We work for the people, for society. In their mission statement, three times people appear. What I want to know, looking into science fiction literature, how is the perception of the university from outside? Even when you talk to businesses who you think would have a more, let's say, natural attitude towards it, they often don't see the university as an accessible place. <clears throat> Sorry, they don't see the university as a place that they can go and talk to people and exchange ideas. It's it's actually seen as very closed, a very difficult space to enter. And you know, all the university professors are very arrogant. And they think they're better than everyone else. So I actually I don't think this. Uh, this image of the, the good university opens up. I, I, my specialization is in regional development. And ever since I joined academia, I've always had this interest of talking to policymakers and engaging with them. So I try to find time for that. But it's not easy. It's not easy because I always have to think, okay, every time I spend 
a week, two weeks, a month working with a policymaker, it's one paper I'm not writing. And that could be bad for my career. So th there is that tension, uh, I think. Both the perception and the reality of it is far from perfect. This, all of this is academic. You were made as well as we could make you, but not to last. I think in a lot of these books, people are very cynical towards it. This, they just accept that knowledge is at the service of business, profit, or even war. I think one of the most interesting books I read was uh, called Forever War, uh, which is this, it's a very interesting book, but it's about a, a war that starts between humans and an alien race and lasts for centuries, and they're at war with each other. Um, and then at some point, the humans evolve to a point where they have telepathic powers. And it turns out that the aliens also had telepathic power. So they start communicating. They, they say, why are we at war? And the aliens said, no, we thought you started it. And the humans said, no, no, we were told you started it. And, and so they realized that actually that it's just been the military and the government institutions in, in uh, Earth that had an interest in propagating this lie. And, they, and, and everything was at the service of it. The economy, the universities, science was all at the service of it. Uh, dear Pedro, in your research about science fiction, um, do you find out if society is satisfied um, about the direction in which research is going? The institution itself doesn't really, as much as they want to or they say, the institution is actually prepared to deal more with like powerful interests. But then at the level of the researcher, you, if you have the freedom to do it, there are people who, who commit to that idea of uh, science for society. Yes. Thank you, Pedro. In fact, that is it. The institution is a big mammoth who works with the powers and the single, the individual scientist can be the one who makes the change. Let's look how the European University alliances develop in this regard. Thank you for listening and have a nice afternoon. Goodbye.